I can switch off, please. What is this? Or you cannot hear the sound. Very good uh, evening to all the panelists, Dr. Ko, Dr. Siti, and uh, Prof. Anba. Welcome, welcome again. I'm trying to share screen. Hi. I'm trying to uh, get my files uh, shared. Yeah. Let me so, just. Uh, I wasn't able to do it. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Uh. Hold on, Doctor. <laughs> Not that easy, yeah. It should be simple enough, <laughs> but somehow right now, yeah, it's, yeah, it should be. I simple. think the host should allow so everything it's is allow it, right yeah, now. yeah, they, they, they won't allow it. Okay, Aaron, to get you on dinner. Quick dinner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Siti, try, try now, Dr. Siti. Okay, try now. Huh? Yeah. Can you hear me very well? Yeah, can. Loud and can clear, you. man. Loud and clear. So how's my uh, voice check, sound check? Sound check. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, by the way, we are already in YouTube now. So everybody is starting to view us just to let you know. Uh, so oh, we sorry, have, yeah. Uh, yeah. Already in the public domain. So it's Saturday night, right? <laughs> so yeah, today, everyone today, chill today. out. <laughs> So we are still uh, waiting for all the members, uh, participants to come in. What time we are planning to start? Eight o'clock. We will start at eight because we have viewers both sides from here and from the other side also. So we will start uh, at eight. I still couldn't enter the share screen mode. Okay. okay. How about video, uh, doctor? Uh, okay, let me check. We, yeah. we do. Okay, I'm done here. Post disabled participant screen share, sharing. Dr. Anba, you do manage to to to, to share your file? No, I'm 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 just going to stick to the uh, formal discussion, so I'm not sharing any files. Mm -hmm. So I'll just uh, I'll just input as as goes along. But yeah, I have I one video yeah. clip. Um, probably, perhaps uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah, I just wanted to share the model, the wheel of innovation model because we're talking about deep diving into the organization. So that- Try to share your file. 
Sorry. Try to share the file. Share file. I couldn't get the um the, the icon share to screen. It's not not here already. Yeah, share screen. Mm. No, this is not too many things. But it's okay if it's, it's not there. Then I will use it then because that would be very interesting to look at that model. So I should be using. I should be actually. Um, it's, it, should, it should be very easy. We, we remember last week we had a discussion and so easy. It just it appears without much problem. Let me try. Once upon a time, business. Now I've lost you all now. Are you still trying to share your screen? I am, and... Um, okay, let me try. I could only see Dr. Anbar here. I couldn't see anybody else. Yeah, I... No, focusing I on him alone, yeah? No? Let me try and share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Can you see my video game, video play? Yeah, change to. Yeah. Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. I think this is a good one. I mean, this video. Yeah, I play. So I already, uh, I stopped sharing already. So uh, Dr. Siti, you can start sharing as well. Okay, now I've just got to get back into Zoom. Maybe uh, in the initial, I can play the video. We have one attendee raising the hand. Ziyad Ayub. Yes, doctor, with you, Ziyad. Yes, sign a chat. Yeah. Uh, I lost um, <laughs> Dr. Chitran. Dr. Chandran, yes. Yes, yeah, I'm happy to see you as well. How are you? Still look the same, huh? Am I look still look the same? <laughs> Yeah, we should start the session. Yeah, I think it's eight o'clock now. I think we're waiting for the host. Yeah, uh, I was uh, checking on the sharing part just now. I can share, no worries. Can share, oh. I Prof, couldn't. You can share. Shall I try share again and see whether... Uh, you can just try, see whether uh, you're able to share or not. Then then I think the settings is okay. Not an issue. Host disable participant screen sharing. You disable, so you have to... Able okay, it, now, enable now it. try now and see. Okay, hold on. Huh? Uh, yes, let me try play the video again. One minute, huh? Yeah. You should be able to share now. 
Can I just uh, play this video so that everyone participants can, can see? Can, can. You can yeah. try and see. Ah, yeah. Okay. Hi, Excellent. I'm all right. Excellent. You can share. Mm. Yeah. So I think Dr. Siti, you can, you already can share already. Yes, I can. Yeah. Can I try share my video? Can, can. No issue. Okay, very Thank good you. evening to all the participants uh, who have just joined us. Very good evening. Welcome, welcome to our webinar today. Okay, just a bit of housekeeping. Just a bit of housekeeping to all the participants today. Okay, you, if you are not uh, that uh, well versed with Zoom, so you may want to listen to this uh, housekeeping. Uh, if you look at your uh, bottom, I mean, the uh, bottom of your screen, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you can actually see participants, Q&A, pools, chat, share screen, and so on, right? So uh, as a participant, you can look, you can only uh, ask us questions by clicking Q&A. So if you click Q&A, you are able to ask us questions directly to the panel itself. So the panelists will be able to see your question, okay? And there will be also pools launch in a short while, right? Um, you, you'll be able to take part in the pool. There will be five questions. You may want to try it and answer it. Okay, so it will be an eye opener for some of you. Okay, give us another two minutes. We'll be starting our webinar in a short while. Yeah, our polling today is basically getting to know what is innovation, right? So there will be five questions here. So I'm going to launch the poll now. Please do join the poll now while waiting for us to commence in a short while. Thank you. Okay, those who just came, welcome, welcome to our webinar today. Okay, I think uh, we should start. Can we start, uh, Prof? Doctor? Yes, we can start. You are ready? Okay. So, a very good evening to all the participants and also to our respected uh, panels. So, for your information, uh, 
Uh, my name is Dr. Chandiran. I'm basically the organizer for this webinar from Nexus ACE. We're also collaborating this webinar with uh, Lincoln University College and also Trend Tech Services. So we are very happy and very glad uh, uh, to have this webinar. Okay, it's going to be a very uh, fruitful and eye-opener to many HR practitioners uh, out there. Uh, this webinar is basically has a title, if you can see behind, okay? This is basically the title of our webinar, Innovation. Okay, innovation is something which have been there for many years, okay, many centuries, but it's all about how we perceive innovation. How are we going to look at innovation, right? Seriously speaking, some of these elements of innovation, some of the knowledge and skills in innovation is also new for me, right? Uh, there's a lot of dimensions, there's a lot of uh, critical aspect that you can look at innovation. And today, in this webinar, we are going to focus very much on how innovation is seen as a catalyst for future HR growth. In our previous webinar, we have looked into technology, how technology had become very significant in ensuring the growth of HR. So in today's webinar, Okay, we are still looking at technology, but in a different aspect. Okay, technology will be a very minute thing in innovation. So when you talk about innovation, it's not just about technology. It's not just about IR 4.0 elements such as uh, blockchain technology, or it's not just about uh, analytics. Okay, it's not just about uh, blockchain, but it's more than that. Okay, it's, it's more than that. So we have three panelists today. Okay, as usual, our webinar is special because we have a combination of two different uh, 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 world, right? World here means we have an education world and also an industry world, right? So we have uh, practitioners coming from industry and we have an academician coming from an academic world, right? So that's uh, special about our webinar here. So let me introduce, without further ado, our beloved uh, three panelists, right? We are very glad, okay, to have our panelists today. Uh, our panelists are basically top-notch in the country as well as internationally, okay? If I read through their background, you'll see why am I saying so, all right? So let me just uh, introduce to you our first panelist, Okay, our first panelist is Dr. Ko Su Bang. Okay, Dr. Ko Su Bang is an innovation consultant, trainer, and coach with more than 28 years of experience in a wide spectrum of roles in design, manufacturing, IT, Six Sigma, software and process architect, program management, and innovation in Fortune 500 multinational companies based in Malaysia and abroad. His experience includes real-time embedded systems, automotive controller area network, or we call it as CAN, fast, now known as Internet of Thing, or we call it as IoT, digital dashboards, knowledge management, lean, Six Sigma methodologies and tools, product design and development, intellectual property management and patents, design thinking and technology enable innovation. He consults internationally with clients from Australia, Europe, Singapore, Sweden, UK, US, and Malaysia. So he's basically a certified professional innovator, uh, Innovation 360 licensed practitioner. And, and if you see, uh, he has a black belt, okay? He's a black belt uh, in Six Sigma, okay? It's not that easy to achieve uh, such uh, honorable uh, award, okay, or certification. So thank you very much, Dr. Ko, uh, for joining us, for, for giving us uh, 
this opportunity to hear from you. Welcome, Dr. Ko. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for inviting. Pleasure. Uh, and our second panel, Dr. Siti Rohaini Mohamad Yusuf. Okay, she is well-rounded professional with more than 30 years of senior management experience in the manufacturing industry, telecommunication industry, central bank, and local private companies. She had uh, many key positions, uh, such as HR Director, Central Bank of Malaysia, HR Director of Motorola Semiconductor, Head of Organization Development, Telecom Training Center, Director for Non-Academic Affairs, University Telecom, during its initial development. She also has other experiences. She has other experiences include management consulting in the private sector, senior lecturer and postdoctoral researcher at universities. Now, she's basically a licensed practitioner for Innovation 360. She's also holding a black belt, IMBB. And uh, she's also currently a principal consultant innovation management. Welcome, Dr. Siti. Thank you. Thanks for joining Thanks us today. Much. Our third panel, Associate Professor Dr. Anbalagan. Prof. Anba is an instructor for number of CBS units of an associate. Uh, she, he's also an associate professor at the Curtin uh, Malaysia, which is based in uh, Miri and also in Australia. He holds a PhD in management accounting and is currently certified trainer with Ministry of Human Resources. He also has professional membership with CPA Australia and CPA Malaysia. He has been involved in professional training as in, as in technical such as negotiation skills and conducted many training sessions with Malaysian national oil company such as Petronas. Prof. Anba has been working in industry for several years as cost accountant before moving into academic career. So Prof. Anba is also part of the academic mentor for students and conducts many career talks for potential university students. Welcome, uh, Prof. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you for joining thank us today. You. Thank you, Dr. Chandran, for inviting us. So let us uh, move on to our next agenda. And uh, again, uh, let us welcome all the panelists. Okay, we are glad that we can have uh, such uh, very experienced and knowledgeable uh, panelists today. So we will start with the first question today. Okay, we, are, we have prepared a few questions, okay, just to uh, uh, make sure that uh, we, are, we are catering to all our participants today and uh, of course, uh, there will be a lot of information. There's a lot of knowledge is going to be shared by all our panels today, right? So maybe we can just start off with the first question. What are innovation and its role in the industry? I'm very sure for some of us in the HR, innovation might be something new, okay? And we want to know how HR is going to play a crucial role. Okay, but let us hear uh, generally, okay, what is the role of HR in the industry? So perhaps we can start with our first panelist, Dr. Ko. Okay, uh, well, thank you so much for the invitation and the questions. Did you just change the question, uh, what's the HR uh, role in this industry? Or we still stick with this innovation? Uh, we can, we can uh, I mean, uh, look at the many angle, doctor. Right. So, yeah, so, we can look at the first. Thank you. So, uh, first and foremost, I think uh, everyone talks about innovation, right? I mean, if you Google, right, innovation in Google, you end up with more than 2 billion hits, right? So, it's like a six blind man with a big elephant, right? Uh, everyone has a different interpretation depending on who you talk to. And it means different things to different people. But irregardless, innovation is happening everywhere because it's crucial in the sense that, you know, whatever that we took for granted today, even your television in the way we do this webinar at this moment in time, it's all innovation at one point in time, right? So now today, you know, even your car, 
uh, which was once an innovation, but today becomes incremental to take things for granted. So it's everywhere. But why are we innovating? Well, frankly speaking, it is uh, the, in, the only way that enables human progress. Rather than walking from point A to point B to take three days, you now can drive a car to take 30 minutes, right? So these are the things that is enriching and enhancing the life. So there's one portion of it which is actually benefiting the mankind, right? Now, it goes back to this about human resources, right? So now, uh, if we look closely, I know that uh, we have uh, Prof. Anbar here, <laughs> uh, academia, because you know, at times, you know, industry innovate only have two purposes. Either you're innovating for profitability or innovating for growth. And most companies, successful companies, do both. And in fact, uh, there is a paper that uh, myself and I think Magnus published uh, many years back, I think 2018, where we look at companies and innovation, right? Even during the COVID-19 time, innovation is a key to drive uh, the growth, right? This is actually a paper that we publish in IEEE. So I think if you look closely, right, you can you know, QR code the thing. Uh, essentially, innovation is important because it brings us, you know, more than 50% of the world GDP is contributed by innovation. Companies get innovation to move forward with, right? So the only thing that you need to do, right, during the disruptive times or crisis, and you want to progress, innovation is the enabler, right? So in a nutshell, uh, we have innovation that benefits human, right, mankind, therefore we progress. Then when you come to put it in the context of innovation within the organization, most organization, the successful one, if you look at, if you invested in Tesla in March, now you actually make so much profit, right? Just within nine months. Because during COVID-19, during the disruptive times, the innovative company continue to propel themselves further. That's why I think I shared the paper with you, which myself and uh, Magnus, I think, uh, co-published, which is a peer-reviewed paper in IEEE, right? So I think in a nutshell, uh, its role in industry is tremendous. More than 50% of the world GDP is contributed by innovation. Customer would like to buy from innovative companies, right? Innovative company from the HR perspective, <laughs> you command a higher premium. People like to work with companies that's perceived innovative. Look at how many people want to work in Google, Apple, and so on and so forth, compared to a company that is actually not so innovative in perception, right? So there's a lot of you know, uh, ancillary, and also there's also from the commercial perspective, there's whole, also the contribution to the especially the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals to the progress of human mankind. Uh, then at the same time, you also benefit the business world whereby the organization is able to sustain itself to continue to move forward and innovating. Right? I think I better leave this to the rest of the two panelists before I take up too much of the time in talking. I think I'm, I'm also very engaged, you know, and when you start to talk about innovation, I think uh, we, have, we have started well uh, by asking you to break the ice, uh, Dr. Ko. Uh, I think uh, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, hear from uh, Prof. Anba. Prof. Anba, what do you think about uh, innovation? How is it uh, cultivated uh, from the perspective of uh, education? All right. For me, I will say innovation is sustainability. If you want to be sustained, then you need to be in a way. Um, you can't survive in the business. Let's look at now. What are we doing now? We are everywhere, but we are still connected to each other. We are, we are like in one platform where we can see each other. It is a way of innovation. So education sector, it is no more on a conventional mode anymore. It is face-to-face -face teaching anymore. It doesn't work anywhere anymore. When the COVID started, it has actually give us a very good challenges that how are we going to transform ourselves um, from being in a very traditional approach of teaching to new way of teaching that how are we going to deliver our product, our teaching, our materials and everything through innovative. Um, it is a digital transformation. Digital transformation means how are you going to implement a cutting edge technology? It's a new way of thinking about the values, the business models and the organization that how are we going to implement things that in a way that we can still run the business as usual to sustain. Otherwise, we'll be out of the business. 
our students are everywhere our 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 materials are everywhere how are we going to deliver this material to our students to make sure that the business as usual otherwise you're going to you're going to lose the business so innovations is about sustainability the other thing is i would say innovation is about fear of losing out the fear of missing out if you're not innovate you have the fear that you're going to lose out you're going to lose the business you're going to lose the revenue you're going to lose the 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 growth of your revenue of it because if you are not innovate you're not going to deliver the product to the customer and the customer is not going to come to you you can't wait the customer come and visit you anymore you have to go to the customer and the only way that you can go to customer you have to have a digital transformation thanks uh, prof um now this uh, many hr uh, practitioners are talking about uh technology you know they are talking about uh, hr analytics they are talking about uh, blockchain uh, they are talking about iot big data you know so this is like a taboo uh, nowadays in hr uh, but i believe that uh, technology is not the only one uh, which is playing the role in innovation uh, perhaps uh, dr siti maybe you can just elaborate further uh, technology is not the only one i believe in innovation it's more than uh, a technology okay um i i will discuss uh, based on two uh, aspects uh, of innovation i mean we talk about innovation in in the organization on one hand and on the other hand organization in hr at the main that's the main topic really that's a, a catalyst hr being the catalyst for Uh, innovation for an organization now um, the two panels have discussed quite a bit on innovation at the organizational level yeah but having said that uh, we talk about organizations we talk about two kinds of organizations um, uh, at, at this moment um, i would uh, talking about uh, business organizations and certainly uh, academic institutions now um, business organization without innovation they just going to shop and they could last probably for five years if they are very lucky otherwise uh, three years they would have just closed shop particularly during this pandemic post uh, uh, era um now um university when we talk about innovation it's just not about e learning it's just not about virtual classroom it's about innovation of knowledge is is supposed to be the leading edge in knowledge they have to ensure that whatever they teach all they teach is relevant to the industry not something that they have taught 3 years ago 2 years ago even last year because of the crisis this disruption uh during this post um or rather during this pan- pandemic uh, era universities must play a leading role in innovating knowledge well i have been working in university and what it is like we are not talking about the textbooks that was that has been written 5 years ago first second or third edition irregardless it's not being is of no use anymore it's got to be you know looking back at what uh, uh, the, the current situation is a crisis situation look back at what the business require so that whatever you deliver in the university it is relevant to the business environment so it's not about being sitting in the ivory tower of knowledge so to say knowledge is very rapid it is ever changing by the minutes in fact there's many research going on every second every minute this, there is some kind of breakthrough right so uh innovation in terms of university we are talking about knowledge because it's it's not a big deal talking about e e classroom virtual classroom you know it is nothing because that that's uh, that's what it is at the moment so we are talking about pushing the 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 boundaries of knowledge that's innovation in university and for me um that that first and foremost uh, for innovation and of course uh, before we can even talk about um pushing the boundaries of knowledge uh, they got to know pe- universities basically have to understand what innovation is all about yeah they have to be able to explore and find out uh, not only from theoretical uh, perspective but real life right the real world what it is like uh, to actually manage university in relation to innovation a university that has no innovation uh, culture 
will be losing out, right? Whether they're public or private university. For public universities, the government, as you know, they're not funding much anymore because of the economic slowdown, the recession. And the private university is very difficult now, basically it's very highly competitive because parents are very particular in terms of the, the, the quality of university that you're going to send uh, the students to. So which means to say that we're talking about university as a total institution and obviously uh, academicians and so on and those operational support, they are in crisis, all right? Because uh, where they used to be able to compete at international level uh, with, with, uh, with uh, you know, banning, uh, you know, not really banning, but uh, travel is not, a, it's really a constraint now, uh, basically, even from state to state, what more from country to country, which means to say that it is, they are in real crisis. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the business aspect, for business corporations. They are, they, it's the same um, kind of approach as the university. The only thing is that they are dealing with products. It could be consumer products, it could be any kind of products. Now for business, uh, if they are not looking at it as um, a priority, as I said, like it's uh, academic institution, they are bound to close down. And it is crisis management at its worst or at its best, whatever you would call it, yeah? So it, we are in a crisis, we are, the world is, we're in a crisis of, um, uh, you know, shutting businesses, all right? Um, and, um, and going back to where we, we started um, many generations ago, perhaps centuries ago, if you're not very careful. Because what, right now, what organ, most organizations are doing is they are still at the operational level, at Horizon One, in this, using the terminology of uh, many uh, Innovation 360, yeah? We are at uh, universities and mainly even private businesses. They are at Horizon One, mainly operation, trying to improve a little bit, you know, taking the time, not realizing that we are not talking about that anymore. We basically, innovation is about Horizon Three. It's about radical change. It's about things that you never think about yesterday. It's about looking at the future for sustainability, right? Uh, the world is in the turmoil. Even the big, the powerful countries are not powerful anymore. They're all slowly collapsing because uh, you can blame it on the pandemic, but it, it's also about this, this the, the, the real thing is about that they're not improving. They're not innovating enough. They are so much into politics, into, into all kinds of uh, economic um, uh, issues. Now, having said that, go, let's, let's go in into human resource management. Human resource management is very important because they are dealing with people. What is organization? Organization is about people. Now, they must innovate and they have to innovate. They have no choice because um, if they don't, there might not be even a human resource management department anymore. Why? Because we're talking about innovation. Anything can happen. It, it, uh, HR can be outsourced. You know, they can, I mean, they have, we have best re uh, recruiter, recruitment agency, best payroll, you know, um, a, a company, private company that can actually do payroll. Uh, name it, they, they, there's so many experts outside. So why bother, where do we bother with human resource uh, department in the first place? So what I'm trying to say is, it, there is again crisis management within the HR department, within HR uh, function. And they have to play a strategic role together with uh, the, uh, the the key the key leaders, with the top leaders, with with, with the CEO, with, with the, the 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 presidents of the organisation, they must not be lying low or uh, you know in, in terms of the profile. They have to go up because they are actually the company. Because the company is about people, it's about brains, it's about mindset. So HR has to change. Otherwise, just like any other organization, so university, they will disappear from the organizational structure. Um, so what it means for me is that it is about crisis management in Asia, right? It is also about changing the mindsets of the leader, of the manager, of the director. You can have fancy names, all right? Chief HR or whatever, um, I, I'm a bit lost of touch with this. But what I'm trying to say is uh, fancy names, but you better, be uh, you know, uh, uh, an innovator. Uh, now, talking HR itself is very interesting 
because all aspects of the HR functions can be automated. You can use artificial intelligence, digitalization, uh, machine learning, all aspects of it. So HR should not be hierarchical, should not have too many people, no. Let the, let the, let the uh, AI do the job for you. You just have to be uh, closer to people to find out, to communicate, to find out uh, 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 problems because during this uh, pandemic period, a lot of people basically are uh, faced with all kinds of uh, personal, emotional issues. You know, they then they probably need uh, some uh, advice from uh, you know some from psychiatric because of all these uh, problems that they have to handle at the same time. So uh, let me stop at this point because I later on I'll just zero in on HR. I've spoken what I have spoken already. Yeah, I think. I uh, it actually enlightened us uh, in many different aspects, uh, especially uh, looking at uh, the functions of HR. I think HR should uh, move uh, with higher uh, role in an organization, uh, not just focusing very much on administrative. You know, we used to talk that HR means it's about, you know, working uh, in a room, not going out. You know, you have to interact more on, uh, with the documents, you know, and uh, uh, book down with all this administrative work. I think we should uh, uh, innovate uh, ourselves uh, in terms of uh, mindset. And I think we have to uh, go further and look into how we can actually go close uh, with employees and also uh, very much uh, uh, having uh, human touch. I think that that's the key point, eh? a key take from yes. what uh, Dr. Siti had mentioned just now. Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Ko, you can... Uh, you know, just now, uh, Dr. Siti was actually talking about crisis management. HR can actually play the role and so on. Uh, maybe uh, you can look into the other aspect, how industry is actually using uh, innovation in managing the crisis, especially now during the COVID-19. Maybe uh, Dr. Ko can uh, uh, let us know. Yeah, I think, uh, frankly speaking, right, you know, uh, we use a lot of word innovation. And uh, this is something that like I fear a lot because, you know, in industry, every time you use the word innovation, it's very bombastic. And actually, there's a lot of hidden things inside which you, you never align. I think for me, when I use the word innovation, I don't refer them to invention. I don't refer them to creativity. I don't refer them to uh, those things that, you know, have uh, been loosely coupled around because otherwise, we actually have no ending. And then when you brought up the point about learning, you know, like blockchain and you no know, AI and all those, for me, very clear on that. Learning new things is not innovation. Learning new things is just playing the game only. You prerequisite before you want to go to play football, you need to put on football boots and all those. That is where it is. And that is one reason why Malaysia actually stuck in this. Many Malaysian thought they learned AI, big data scientists and all this, they are innovating. It's not yet because you are just acquiring the skill, but it has a potential to give you a benefit of scaling and exploring something new. So in my own definition, innovation is about creating something new out of an idea that's new to you or your organization. And it's also a creative destruction whereby you know, the creativity, because you come up with something new, you disrupt things. When you disrupt things, you take away something from someone else, just like Grab, Uber. You took away something from the taxi driver. It took away more than just a taxi driver, right? It took away the guy making the taxi panel, you know, the meter that runs. It took away the taxi radio cap, you know, the radio. It took away many things. But the thing is like, you never realize how disruptive innovation is. So now putting back into the crisis mode, right? The reason why people have to wait until crisis mode is because they need a burning platform to move forward. And most leaders, especially in the C-suites, no, not many are willing to take the leap, right? To move forward. Because the problem with this is actually about innovation. It's like things are changing slowly around the landscape. And a good example, you will have a frog that is putting into the cold water and you slowly boil the water, the frog will die. You have the hot water, the frog jump into the hot water, you know how to jump out. But many co companies, because it moves into the cold water and you slowly heat it up, and that's where the complacency comes in, right? Until, you know, sometimes you hear the word, who stole my cheese, right? You no, know, things has yeah. moved, right? So the thing is about this, 
when it comes to this, you don't have to wait for crisis to innovate. That's one. Because the thing is that why people wait until crisis mode to innovate is because they would have no other where to, nowhere else to go. It's a burning platform. Imagine you actually at Karate, the platform is burning. What do you do? You jump, right? But before that, you think the water is too cold. There are sharks in there. You never jump. But when you have a burning platform, that's where you jump. And that's where crisis falls it. And that's sometimes you see here, the you know, uh, what's that been you know, circulating around? Who is actually the CTO of the organization, right? That make the transformation, digital transformation you know, happen. COVID-19, because you know, uh, a lot of things people talk about digital health, teleconsultation, no one does it. But today, boom, right? Because of this, everyone moved forward. If you are not in digital, you are out of the game. So now go back to human resources because human resources, traditionally, there's a lot of things that you can do, right? But because of, uh, it's very traditional, you know, because HR is big, you got payroll, you got recruitment, staffing and all those, right? But certain things, you know, because of robotic process automation, the AI and all those, it comes in and then try to make your life easier. Resume screening automatically suggested, shortlisted certain resume for you, right? So these are the things that you can do it. So the thing is actually like this, because when it comes to this, it's actually, we have to be very careful. We are dealing with people. In any technology, a change management, and also innovation that we, you know, involve technology, you cannot pick up a hammer, everything looks like a nail. The moment you have that situation, you're dead. There's no success for you. You need to know where things are, right? The right tool for the right place, for the right cause, for the right purpose. If you don't have the purpose sort up, there's no business case for it. Don't go for it. And don't get be FOMO, fear of missing out. Because innovation, again, is another thing about innovation. It's actually very specific to you. If my health, the easiest way to understand this is like healthcare. I have high cholesterol, for example. If I take cholesterol intervention drugs, then it works for me. You cannot do that because you do that, no effect for you. So a lot of times, you know, Malaysian companies just hop on, you know, continue to want to do that. But you need to do the medical checkup to screen your healthcare status to see, oh, I actually have high blood hypertension, I have diabetic, therefore I took this intervention. That works for you, right? So that is why innovation is very difficult. And another thing is about innovation is experiential learning for the technology portion. A lot of people can talk about innovation. Experiential learning is very simple. Think of riding a bicycle. For adults who know how to ride a bicycle, you have no problem. You're unconscious, you're competent. So this is why you ride the bicycle so easily. Now, the thing is that for those people who never rode a bicycle, they look at riding a bicycle so easy, just hop on and cycle. Unconscious, incompetent, will know. Hop on the bicycle, try to pedal, fail. So it becomes conscious, incompetent. He or she knows that he doesn't know they don't know how to ride the bicycle. They start to learn how to put brake balance and all those, right? Then because conscious competent and unconscious competent. How many times you talk to innovator? You ask them, how do you manage to get to this, you know, this particular new uh, innovative product and solution? They tell you, I don't know. A lot of times because they, it never occurred to them, right? So the thing is about this, is actually, it's not something you can learn on this. You need to experience it. And that's one reason why a lot of people in order to experience innovation, it takes a long time. And that's why the startup culture comes in because very rapidly, you do something very quickly, you know, you can learn the skill and go for there. So I think if you look at the, the HR per se, you actually at a juncture whereby all the signals are there in engineering terms. I mean, I'm an engineer, I'm, I'm a PhD, it's actually in engineering. So we design cars, you know, real people using real tools, right? So now the thing is that when you look at this, right? When we innovate, we don't even use the word innovate because innovation is so sensitive that you don't want your competitors to know what you're working on. This was what I was, right? When I was designing cars, this is back in 1994. Today is everyday life, right? That's how things are. So when you innovate, you actually keep your mouth shut because you don't want people to know. You have read stories about innovation being stolen or something like uh, Apple prototype stole or lost, an uh, engineer lost the prototype or stolen by someone, that engineer commits suicide because that's how severe it is trade secret, right? This is actually innovation for the sake of that, uh, you know, uh, industry for the purpose of you know, growth and also uh, profitability. Now, coming back to HR, the thing is actually you deal with people. So the thing is that once you deal with people, 
you need to be taking a very sensitive approach. It's about change because it's about co painting a compelling future where the forward future is going to be, look nicer, things like that. Now, the trick here is like this. We are talking about signals to noise ratio. There's a lot of noise. How do you know which one is signals? Which one is noise? How do you know which information? Let me ask you this question. During COVID-19, there's so many information being passed around. How do you know which one is the fake one and which is the real one? See, this is a reason why World Economic Health Forum, I mean, World, uh, World Economic Forum, right, stated the number one job skill for 2022 is analytical skill and innovation. If I give you information right in front of you, those information are all around us. And why some people can take that and then create something new and where all of us are just sitting here and do nothing. Right. So coming back to this particular disruption, during crisis, I think this is where I see it as an opportunity because this is a time where people are willing to change. And then if you can lay down the steps for them, the baby steps, the crawl, walk, run approach for them to do, don't do the big bang. Big bang will always fail in innovation and then it failed to you know, very badly, right? Crawl, walk, run approach, you think big, dream big, start small because that is where the iteration is. Living through to the fourth industrial revolution, where the big data, you know, the AI, everything is there. We need to make sense out of the information by using data-based decision-making rather than gut feel, because gut feel doesn't work. Uh, not, not really doesn't work as much, I was should correct myself, doesn't work as reliably, right? Sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't work. It's still a 50% chance, right? But when you have the innovation that you want to move forward with, you invested your time, your money, your resources, you want to do that. So from the HR perspective, I would encourage the HR professional to look into, don't worry about the job, just worry about the tasks that can be automated. Resume screening, these are the tasks, right? The task can be automated using AI or using uh, maybe uh, one of these robotics process automation to write the letter you know, to your applicant and so on. So when you look at that, it's not so disruptive. Otherwise, it's going to be very ugly. Just like, you know, I don't want to quote with you, you know, a lot of automotive, you know, autonomous driving truck, they are ready, but they're not there to be out in and about because of it impacts jobs, right? If the moment you release an autonomous driving truck, all the truck drivers will be out of jobs. So you have to, government has to step in and do that. So from the company perspective, human resources have to take into consideration whereby uh, rather than getting rid of the person, you chunk, chunk out the sizes of the job, the task that can be automated to make your improvement. Now it can be better, faster, you know, do more with less, that kind of approach. So in summary, the COVID-19 is actually a perfect digital disruptor. It's a black swan event, I, as what I call it. So it, don't, it doesn't come in so often. So this is actually a very good opportunity. A lot of things turning the table around, turning the tide around. This is the moment, seize it. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Ko. Uh, I think Dr. Ko uh, had enlightened us uh, many things. Uh, what I managed to grab, the most important thing is basically the, the level of preparedness. In fact, I think uh, Dr. Ko, we, we had a chat and we were talking about this level of preparedness. How much Malaysians, uh, especially uh, uh, our HR professionals or HR department are preparing uh, towards innovation. And this shouldn't be starting uh, at the level of workforce or in an organization. It should be starting... Uh, way back to education. I believe that uh, in universities, in colleges, innovation should start very long time ago. Okay, in fact, uh, there should be uh, courses which embedded with innovation syllabus or innovation uh, assignments and so on, right? Uh, and if you look at many of our syllabus nowadays, uh, Malaysian uh, syllabus, I think, there's a bit of lacking in terms of uh, uh, innovation and knowledge. There is, but maybe I think it's very crucial for us to uh, put more impact so that uh, the current students and uh, scholars will be well prepared. Even myself personally, uh, I'm looking at uh, many schools and many universities are struggling okay, with uh, how to deliver their courses and how to deliver their modules online. In fact, uh, 
you know my my children itself you know when uh, they are facing their teachers online uh, the teachers are actually they are struggling you know how to communicate with the students uh, which tool to press you know which one uh, to uh, to use in order to share screen or share their notes and so on so i think the education i mean the, the knowledge of innovation should start from uh universities or colleges itself in fact in schools right so maybe dr anbar maybe you can just uh, comment on this part so what do you think how um, how is the uh, knowledge being uh, driven maybe in kutin or maybe in any other universities or colleges in malaysia i agree uh, dr chandran uh, innovation is actually should start from the university it's not just the teaching the book uh, theory knowledge that, that, that the students should know it's also the practical side of it that how are they going to now deliver their product i i i put this into two different things one is on a cost leadership another one is on a product differentiation right the university wants to reduce the cost as much as possible because when you're talking about digital transformation it involves of uh, cost a lot uh, purchasing the internet you know uh, buying the software uh, buying the technology and all these things it's, uh, it's it's cost is involved at the other end is how are we going to bring this knowledge to the students using a product differentiation all right so the universities are looking into the practical side of it is how are they going to deliver their knowledge to the students using the technology right uh, if you take me as an example um, i've been teaching face to face class for so many years already i agree with dr go with many mentioned the start of covid covid is the initial start that make people to think innovatively that how are we going to deliver this product to the students right then i have to learn by myself that how to use zoom i have to learn by myself how to use the microsoft team i have to learn by myself that how to use the uh, google meets and all these things and in fact i have to teach the students that there are so many assessments that um, in the past they do used to do it face to face uh, uh, approach but now i have to learn by myself that how do we can use the technology to deliver the product and the material so that the students also learn that stuff so i create uh, something in my unit which is called eco 360 where using the eco 360 the students can do presentation uh, real time presentations where the students are using it because if they go to industry they have to be innovative as well so they it is something has to create from the university so i create a, a assessment using a presentations called eco 360 where the students do a real time presentations uh, they upload the materials and everything like while we are doing the video recording now we are uploading materials we are showing behind the screen this one and i have to force the students to think innovatively it's not just sitting and doing presentation you have to incorporate the uh, uh, supporting materials you have to incorporate the newsletter you have to incorporate the video clip you have to incorporate a uh, lot of other things while you're doing the presentation itself so i create the assessment criteria in such a way that 80% of the marks is goes to the innovation not just the content alone the content yes we are looking at it that the way you are uh, the materials that you are giving to me is it's right knowledge and all this thing but how are you delivering at the end of the day is what is matter because when you go to the industry of course they need to have the book knowledge no doubt about it they need to have a book knowledge but they have to go beyond the book knowledge how are you going to deliver the knowledge how are you going to uh, tell the knowledge that you have learned in an innovative way you no know? so i have forced my students that doing things now in an innovative way first semester the students was not really successful but surprisingly second semester the students were so surprised that they did it very well they while they're talking they can incorporate the technology they can bring the 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 supporting material behind the scene and i got so shocked and surprised that they learned because first semester when the first semester started it was during the covid time that's the initial period march 
that's the the beginning stage of everyone is in the dilemma what to do what not to do and all these things but i think when when the second phase is covid started people already learned how to make things in a very different way so students started to learn in a very innovative so it is in a nutshell what i'm trying to say is when we create the assessment we create the assessment in a such a it 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 is embark technology for the students to use it 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 develop for them to use the technology incorporate the technology to deliver their materials and deliver their assessments yeah if i may add right i think uh, prof anba yeah, go ahead i actually you know, like what you just mentioned and that's exactly what we are lacking because a lot of universities right only focusing on the technical skills no soft skill right so the rate things are going right just imagine you know, they never teach you how to present they never teach you how to influence communicate your idea a lot of this these are all the needed traits if you want to innovate because you can sell an idea you cannot innovate because there's no way people will listen to you right these are the soft skills that right, here is now where we are got two groups now right one group will, will believe that technology continue to be there like i mentioned to you learning something new is not about innovation it's just capacity building right absorptive capacity is there but now the fact that we know that technical things ai can do it better than human so what leaves us human to do human right that's soft skill right the influencing skill the communication skill but we never teach this or seldom teach this in university all your assessment is mostly on how you pass your stem subjects and here is where the disconnect comes in and that's where you know the learning perhaps university should focus more on soft skills in addition to your you know, the stem skills and the technical skills because otherwise we actually have the ai engine the computer can do a better job than us in the technical skills but human can do even do the soft skill and communication and where do we end up with and that's where perhaps hr people need to really drum up to the university to produce more soft skill side brush up industry relevant soft skill like presentation you no know, idea pitching that kind of things sorry yeah that's how i would think thanks i think uh, the dr ko you, you you managed to highlight uh, those uh, cr critical issue which is happening in the education so i think uh, uh, universities especially the ministry of education uh, together with uh, all the other schools in the country and also universities especially i think they have to look into all this uh, critical aspect uh, how to cultivate the sense of uh, innovation you know uh, being more uh, uh, crucial when they look at uh, all these uh, elements okay not just about technology but about mindset and so on i think it's it's very important for them to have that awareness at the beginning itself you know not not at the uh, stage where it's too late you know for you to uh, think about all these uh, uh, different way of uh, thinking and different way of doing things and so on i think this is where we are stuck now i think uh, many companies and uh, many universities are basically stuck because i think we we are lack of preparedness okay uh, uh, i think that could be one of the reason why many universities and colleges are struggling uh, into uh, having a good flow of uh, teaching and so on all right uh, there's a question here uh, by mr lesley okay how should hr professionals change to foster enterprise performance uh, entrepreneurship agility creativity and innovation i think maybe the best person to talk about it is maybe dr siti you want to talk about it and maybe uh, dr ko also can uh, add on okay uh, we talk about soft skills just now yeah so uh, when we talk about soft skills um, uh, in relation to innovation uh, we are talking about leadership basically now um, uh, it's very important for the hr manager um, the hr uh, whoever is heading the hr uh, uh, he must or he or she must be an entrepreneur so to say uh, he using i mean let's say he must uh, have an entrepreneurial mindset uh, mindset to start off with he cannot be an administrator not at all not even just a manager for that matter 
So he has to be entrepreneurial uh, in terms of uh, his attitude, uh, in terms of he, he managed uh, uh, HR in the situation, because innovation is about, uh, is about being uh, entrepreneurial and nothing less than that. And, this, oh, and what we are talking about is uh, we also have to drive this culture uh, for innovation um, and the, the HR manager would be the key person to, be, to, to do that because he is in charge of people. It's about the people process. And when we talk about um, uh, entrepreneurial culture, there's a lot of things you know, um, that has to be done. Uh, firstly, it's about changing of attitudes. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of work to be done in this respect because basically well, uh, the sense, the, the idea of innovation just comes, just comes in the you know, last few months because of the pandemic. Before that, it's, it's just about creativity. It's, it's just about uh, a, a change um, you know, um, a process, which is not very impactful. So it's got to start with awareness. You know, everybody in the organization must understand what innovation is all about and must be aware of the critical uh, needs for innovation, whether in the department or, uh, or within the organization, it is important at all levels from CEO, and CEO is very important obviously because he steers the organization and he's the person who's really responsible and, uh, of uh, innovation uh, and right down to the janitor. And there must be an awareness, and that can be taught uh, in, 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 in the training classes. And once there's, there's this awareness, then uh, the, we must, uh, the uh, HR manager must go back to the um, organizational values. Do they have any, uh, do, the, what do their values say about innovation? Is there anything about innovation? And I believe not much, not many. So they could put innovation into the value system. Yeah, so innovation is just about, not about just the hardware, it's also about the software. If anything, it's about the software. It's, it's just, it's just it's, it's, it should be in the behavior, in the attitude, in the way that things are being done. So it's got to do with the mindset. And it's got to be implemented, uh, you know, surely. Uh, uh, and also it's got to be um, radically uh, implemented in the sense that uh, it's got to be done now, if not yesterday. And it is something that has to be uh, pushed through. Uh, if if there's an inertia within the department or the organization, it's got to be pushed, if, if not enforced. So this is what, um, so looking at innovation is so critical and we are not talking just about the operational, the first level of innovation. We are talking about the um, radical innovation, something that you, you've not done before, you've not thought about before because, well, the organizations of the world is in a crisis. So it's got to do with the software, with the mindset, with the attitude, with the behavior, with the belief systems, with the values. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Can, um, I, can, I, can I just add um, what Dr. Siti has said? That yeah, I okay. think the um, innovation is about the growth mindset. She mentioned about the behavior. She mentioned about the attitude and all those things. I think we can't have the fixed mindset anymore. We have to have a growth mindset because it is very challenging uh, environment now. Um, I equate innovation into an equation which is called event plus response plus the outcome. So if you want to change the outcome, it is all depend on the way of you respond to the event. So if you respond to the event in a very innovative way, of course, the outcome will be favorable to you. If you respond to the event in a very negative way, not in a growth mindset, in a very fixed mindset, then that will always give you the outcome, which is unfavorable to you. Agree, agree, Prof. Uh, I think uh, we always talk about uh, multinational companies, you know, how multinational companies are uh, taking part uh, in innovating their processes, uh, uh, you know, in uh, bringing their employees uh, 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 towards you know higher level of thinking and so on. How about uh, enterprises, uh, Dr. Ko? 
how about those small medium enterprises so how this innovation can play the role to uh bring them uh, to another level up or maybe to give them a better profit well thank you for the questions in my opinion right uh, from what i observe malaysian sme they are more innovative the multinational even though they are big right they actually not that efficient because of the cultural barrier right what i mean by this is actually you know if you look at the cost per employee earning right then you probably will know where they are right but i think uh, we cannot compare apple to oranges as well most multinational actually is you know uh, they are actually in the high tech industry so therefore the employee creation value creation per employee is differently calculated but for this sme i mean they do very well as well with the amount of this particular uh, resources they have because you cannot expect the performance of a rolls royce with the price of the bicycle right So this is where we have to cut, you know, be realistic about it. So I think uh, earlier on when you talk, asked that question, right, we can talk about a lot of leadership and all those, right? At the end of the day, just do it, right? Nothing beats just do it, because when you do it at time, right, you don't even need leadership. Today have a lot of KOL, key opinion leaders, right? These are the things that never come before. Leadership without title, right? So these are the things that the moment you have the right mindset, in fact. I just throw three things for them: be curiosity, creativity, and critical mindset. These three is good enough for them to move forward with. For university students, being curious, always ask how things works. If you drive a car, if you ask that question, are all the wheels turning at the same speed when you go around a corner? If you don't know the answer, then better find out, right? So in the past, we used to use this. Yeah, general knowledge, but today they talk about T-shaped profile professionals. So these are a lot of things that mouse wide, inch deep, inch wide, mouse deep. So you need to do that. Once you have this creativity, you be a curious curiosity, and the critical critical in the sense that you got so many information that comes to you. How do you know which is right, which is wrong, which is fake, which is actually you no know, trustworthy? You decide. And all this information is actually there for you. If every one of you can do that, you can harness this, you know, energy. And then it's about alignment, innovation, right? Actually, we we don't really use this word when you're actually in industry, right? Because if you're inside a company, you're actually creating new product, new services, new solution. You never say I create new innovation, right? But I think that that's how things are, right? So when you create the put things together, you create the you know, something new. You need to aggregate a lot of signals. Know when to introduce. You want to introduce an AI Siri, for example. When do you know it's the right time? Too early, you fail, right? Cost too much. Too late, you are laggard, right? So these are the things that you have, need to be able to consistently do. That at times I will just joke to people because the reason why I'm still in tune is because I the skill I learned in my PhD. I always do the literature research every three months to make sure that you are always the the first person in the world doing that, so that you have original contribution of idea to the knowledge of mankind. Failure to do that, done. So I am not a strong believer putting a system on top of system. You already have system. Just get it to work perfectly, right? Back to basic. So when it comes to here, if you get these people, your employee to do that, all they have to do is leadership, align them. That's about it. Once you align them, you can actually you know we can learn from the birds, right? They fly in this formation. How do they fly in the formation? Everyone in their company chip into that direction. You must have a sense of purpose. Once you have the purpose, everyone knows what to do, and then you just continue to have the alignment, the leadership. And it may not even be the leader. Sometimes the company CEO may not be good at that, but there are some key opinion leader within the organization who are able to lead that. Right. Once you have the purpose. The motivation is different, and just like Prof. Anba mentioned, the mindset is important. And uh, even Dr. Siti mentioned about uh, all this uh, assessment. For example, where do you know where you are? You need you need to do a medical checkup to in order to do that. Otherwise, don't do what the Joneses are doing. Your neighbor do this, you do this, no effect on you. <laughs> right. So I think this where you when you mentioned enterprises, I presume you are referring to SME. They are very innovative, frankly speaking. Give them some credit because with the amount of resources they have, that's the best they do. In India, it's Juga Innovation, right? Low cost, it's still innovating, right? Totally agree with you, uh, Dr. Ko. 
I think Malaysian Malaysian enterprises are very much uh, innovative. Uh, I mean, in fact, now I think uh, during this uh, crisis period, I think they are surviving uh, well. Right. Uh, I I do believe that uh, 80% of our uh, uh, industry is basically very much focusing on SME in Malaysia, and uh, we are still surviving. I mean, uh, not so bad. So uh, I think we have done with all the questions. Uh, I mean, from my side, and also the discussion was uh, really fruitful. Um, maybe before we leave, we could uh, go back and see uh, the results of the poll. Okay, let me just uh, share with all of you here. we can see okay this is the result of the pool okay let me just any all right okay if you look at uh, the results for question number 1 we can see that uh, okay the question is basically which of the following things are done to foster innovation in your organization so higher for innovation none 44% uh, mentioned that they create a culture of innovation okay, in the organization. Uh, 22% say uh, there's an innovation, a train and reward for innovation. Uh, 33% says all above, which means there's a higher for innovation, uh, there's create a culture of innovation, uh, train and reward for innovation. Question number two, Question number two, which of the following example are currently used by your organization to show the successful HR innovation? So 11% says recruitment innovation, 33% says onboarding, 33% says learning and development, 11% says talent management, and 11% says performance management. Okay, just to let you know, Okay, the number is not that many. Yeah, this is just a very little number. So, I mean, it is just uh, within within uh, our webinar. Okay, it doesn't it might not indicate the real uh, uh, impression. Number three, choose some innovation metrics that you will apply now and in the Prof. future. Prof. Chandran, Prof. Chandran, yeah. I think we are seeing the uh, PowerPoint slides. Do you want to show the results? Oh, okay. Hold on, huh? Okay. Uh, yes. Is it? Ah, okay. Can you view it, Pravanba? Yes, yes, yes. We can view it now. Okay, Fantastic. sorry. So where we just now? Okay, number three. Yeah? Choose some innovation metrics that you will apply now and in the future for your organization, right? So fifty-six percent says employee engagement. Twenty-two percent says number of uh, new ideas 33% says solicited feedback 11% says time spent on innovation and finally uh, i think most of our participants today says revenue growth okay let's move on to question number 4 question number 4 is based on your opinion what will be the top driver of a culture of innovation so Uh, we have given them one, two, three, four, five drivers. So the first one: positive interpersonal exchange, zero; intellectual stimulation, thirty-three percent; challenge, eleven percent; flexibility and risk taking, eleven percent. Uh, sorry, yeah, eleven percent. Top level support is the highest, which is forty-four percent. And the last question: How much percentage of your Companies KPI is focusing on innovation. Okay, that's an interesting question. So we have eleven percent says hundred, 
33% says 75%. 22% says 50%, 33% says 25%, and this, the last one was actually my fear, okay, but luckily, zero, okay, which means uh, there is some uh, percentage uh, of uh, innovation in most of the companies uh, in Malaysia, right, again, this might not uh, uh, show the actual impression, eh? Right, so these are basically the results of all the five questions. Uh, I'll be sharing this uh, to all the participants uh, through email. Right, so just uh, uh, hold on. Okay, I'll be sharing soon. So we are finally at the end of our webinar today. Okay, I'm I'm glad that we had a very uh, fruitful session. Okay, I think uh, it's also an eye opener to many of our uh, uh, HR uh, participants today, okay, especially those uh, HR managers, uh, HR uh, executives, and even uh, the owners of companies. Okay, We also have owners of uh, companies uh, coming from SMEs and also multinational uh, company. So uh, again, thank you very much to Dr. Ko. Thank you very much to Dr. Siti. And thank you very much, Prof. Anpa, okay, for, for you to uh, participate in this webinar as a panelist. Uh, we are very glad. And, and the most important thing uh, for us is basically the knowledge that you have shared, okay, the experience that you have shared. Okay, these are uh, so-called as tacit knowledge, okay, which you cannot find anywhere else. Okay, it's a personal experiences experienced by uh, uh, individuals. Okay, and now, whatever knowledge that uh, being shared in this webinar is coming from uh, those uh, uh, professionals and uh, those who are really an expert in the area, right? So again, thank you very much. And I hope uh, we have more uh, such sessions, okay, maybe a better one in the future, right? And uh, thank you very much to all the participants today, right? Hope that you have uh, enjoyed the webinar okay by answering all the questions okay uh, during the pool session just now and uh, i hope that you have uh, enhanced okay uh, your knowledge in terms of uh, innovation and how to bring this knowledge back to your organization and make the changes i think that's the most important thing okay don't just uh, keep the knowledge please share it with everyone share with your employees Okay, share with your top management and I'm sure that uh, it will change the perception of people uh, who sees HR as just an administrators, right? So with that, thank you very much again uh, to all the panelists and thank you very much to all the participants, right? And have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good, night. Good, night. Uh, good weekend, everyone. Good night. Good night.